Welcome back to the Calesti beta. Uh, today we're going to be going over the first block change that you may have seen from the thumbnail. In fact, if you have seen the thumbnail, you've already seen like most of what I'm going to be showing in the video today. Um, so we're going to quickly go over some things, some changes that I have worked on over the past few days. Uh, first of all, before we get into the more um, complex stuff, well, quote unquote complex stuff, we have first of all the dirt block type changes. Uh, you may notice first of all that the world is very green it's very luscious green i'm not a massive fan of that uh, but i'm going to introduce a bunch of color map things for the grass textures uh, that are going to use both the you know base color map system just in case people don't have optifine installed and then we're also going to have custom color maps which affect the grass per biome as well so uh, you can look forward to things like that in the near future uh, but for now obviously i am just going to go over the simple block changes um, we haven't done any color map things just yet i am kind of saving that for the future uh, but obviously i am interested in getting in in a lot of block state slash optifine things um, very very soon hopefully as well so first of all with the dirt blocks we have all the standard dirt blocks that you could see here we do actually have two additional ones at the end there that are a result of block state so i'll go over all of these one by one uh, first of all I feel like the best thing to compare really is dirt and coarse dirt in terms of how different these things are now uh, i feel like dirt and coarse dirt are very noticeably different really it, it just sort of looks like the regular dirt texture in my opinion but just a lot darker and a lot grittier and a lot more noisy and i like that i think it's a, a good comparison to have it gives you a lot of options with building as well uh, and as is the same with skirt i've actually removed all of the like brown slash gray pebbles from the dirt and the podzol as well so it does look a little bit more neutral and a little less chaotic now as well uh, speaking of removing the gray and brown textures from that as well i've also done the same thing with farmland uh, very similar to how i did it with farmland in skirt there are going to be eight different stages of the farmland in terms of moisture because obviously we currently have this texture and we also have the dark brown one as well uh, i am going to make it so that we use all eight stages of moisture to have a sort of gradual progression from this very dark brown to the very light brown and then if you remove a water source and this starts to become desaturated you'll be able to see it very steadily go down uh, which is a feature i do really like as well just gives you a little bit more indication of where things are up to and again I, I just like making use of things that the moyang developers have simply not made use of themselves it's a very easy opportunity for complex texture pack makers like myself uh, moving on from that we have possibly my favorite no definitely my favorite texture i've designed so far we have the grass block i love this i think this looks absolutely fantastic um it's very it's very japa like th i like it because it's very japa like it actually fits the theme of the rest of minecraft now which is not something the grass block did in the first place um yeah, so again, same as Skur, I've simply changed it so that the grass actually comes further down the side of the block, uh, specifically by two pixels entirely. Um, so now obviously grass is more prominent on the side of a grass block, so it looks nicer when it's on like a cliff side or anything like that. Uh, same treatment with the dirt, I'll only say this once more now, obviously with every single type of dirt, regardless of the uh, block that it's within, uh, we've lost the kind of grey pebbles in there, so that's good. Um, obviously the top side of the grass and the side side... Uh, side side and the side texture of the grass wait top side 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 I, that actually kind of makes yeah top side and the side texture of the grass are very bright and very green this will be changing with color map stuff in the future so there's nothing to worry about too much there uh, path block is very simple it's just kind of the grass texture but with the one layer shaved off the top uh, and again a completely new custom top bit which has been designed following the japa style as opposed to just the randomized um kind of path texture that we had beforehand as well uh, podzel is very different very new podzel comes much further down the side of the block as you can see there i think it looks really good uh, mycelium is simply more vibrant so it's a more purpley purple as opposed to the kind of dull gray purple that it is in vanilla minecraft and onwards from that we have the three variants of the snow blocks i i love these i think these look really really good and i must say uh, I do want to give credit to Chroma for his recommendation with the coloration of the snow as well. Uh, obviously, in vanilla Minecraft snow in the new Japa textures, this is actually the, the regular snow block. Again, I've not changed anything to do with the snow, but I've just simply removed the grey pebbles from the dirt section. As you can see here, where the snow kind of comes down to the bottom, you can see hints of like bluey green coming through. And that is, of course, the color that grass is supposed to be in cold biomes. So you can sort of see the grass behind the snow. It's sort of peeking out in certain places. I've tried to follow the same trend with podzol and mycelium, uh, giving the snow a bit of a brown tinge where you can see the snow is sort of like maybe clearing up a little bit. And you can see this purple. I think that looks lovely. That's a lovely shade of purple right there. 
I think it looks really, really nice. And again, you can see like the kind of mycelium texture showing through at the bottom there with the few purple pixels that we have uh, as well. And again, for anyone who doesn't know, this these three textures being split apart is using block states because obviously if we go into the F3 menu and look at this podzel right here, you can see on the very far hand right side of the screen, if I just, you know, mouse over it here, I don't know if you can see that very well, it does say snowy true. Now we can actually make use of that in terms of block states to redirect the texture to an entirely custom one, um, whether or not the podzel does have snow on it. So if I was to simply get myself some podzel and some snowy podzel and go in the F3 menu, you can see here we have snowy false and snowy true. And you can very easily detect that with block state files and then redirect to a different texture. And that is entirely how that works. So that about does it for the natural grassy blocks. Um, this kind of video is all about the natural blocks that you would run into in vanilla Minecraft. So we have stone, granite, diorite, and andesite as well. Uh, first of all, the stone texture, completely new. This is just a completely new design for stone. I hate Jappa stone. I'm not gonna lie, I hate it. I, honest to God, just to drive this home as hard as I can. When I first saw the Jappa textures, the main thing that was putting me off from using them was the stone. It looks like wool. I'll, I'll try and pull a screenshot up right now that I took yesterday, but the Jappa stone looks like wool, and I can't unsee that. I think it looks awful. Uh, and I'm just thinking, now, does, does, the new, does my new texture look like wool as well, actually? Let's see. Because it might do. And it looks less like wool. It looks less like wool, but it still looks a little bit like wool. I guess that's something that you can't really avoid with it being a grey texture in general. Um, but yeah, this also has like a bit of a yellow tinge to it as well, which is kind of referencing the fact that stone might be a sort of limestone, perhaps. Um, I'm not entirely sure where I want to go with this. I'm thinking of having a colour map for stone, which would just simply give stone a very, very subtle tint of a specific colour based on which biome it's in. Uh, but again, we're not going to get to the colour map things for quite a while. So if we do do that, I'm going to revert the stone texture back to a very simple grayscale and we'll add the yellow tinge on afterwards based on what biome it would be in. So for example, uh, sandstone biomes, desert, mesa, that kind of thing would have the yellow tinge, whereas uh, mountain biomes would have a much darker stone that was kind of like a greeny brown dark stone type thing. Uh, almost from that we have granite, diorite and andesite. I really like these textures. I, I really, really don't like granite in Japa. I think it looks so chaotic and so bad and I just don't understand how anyone could ever build with that. Like, I, I get that it's supposed to be a natural block and you're supposed to kind of like polish it into the refined polished granite variant even that isn't nice though like i don't know what you're supposed to do with those textures so i've massively reworked this um this is kind of an entirely new texture which is built out of a number of different things there's like a face there do you see that there's like a face like here I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't predict that. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so basically the way that the uh, granite and diorite texture have both been made is they're actually both two textures kind of like compiled on top of each other. Um, one of these is the original granite texture, but massively toned down in terms of noise, and then it has a very simple flat overlay of, I think, pretty much just grey, or even maybe like the Jappa stone, just kind of overlaid over it. And then I've picked out certain numbers of pixels, separated them into categories of like four or five different colours, and then filled in the colours based on the pool of colours that you get in the palette of the original granite block, and then just brightened, basically. So it, it's pretty simple how I've made these things. They are entirely new textures for the granite and the diorite. I just think they look really nice. I think they look a lot better than what we have in vanilla Minecraft today. Uh, and the andesite, uh, are, admittedly, isn't changed very much at all. It's just simply saturated to be more yellow, which just kind of puts it apart from other grey type blocks that you would get. I actually, I really like that granite is a sort of yellow colour. No, not granite. I really like that andesite has a sort of a yellow tinge to it in this. So uh, we are going to try and stick with that theme as we did with Skur as well. Uh, and finally, onto the polished variants, we obviously have polished granite, which is just a very clean version of granite. Uh, it is quite simply the granite texture with the bottom and right hand side darkened and the top and left hand side brightened as you can see there and then the middle bit just has its noise reduced by a considerable amount and then it just kind of brightens up a little bit and that is how we make the polished variants that same process was done for all of them so you can see obviously how the original granite texture is in the polished granite you can see how the original diorite texture that that's a perfect example you can see there this kind of line here of these pixels like this diagonal line is literally right there in the polished diorite texture. And that is exactly what I was going for. This is just supposed to be a refined, polished version of the respective block type. Now, obviously, um, people do like to have the connected textures for polished granite, diorite, and andesite, and I fully understand why. Um, but as I've expressed in the past, I am not a fan at all 
of building two blocks next to each other and the seams that you would be able to see previously just magically disappear. I don't like that. So even though we will be adding a lot of CTM features in the future, this is not going to be one of them. So please don't get your hopes up if that was something you were hoping for. Uh, however, if that is something people do really want, I do already have a few ideas in mind for add-on packs. So maybe we could come back to that at a later date. You never know. Um, but yeah, once again, there you can see the diorite texture. Uh, I keep getting these all right. You know, I did it. I, got, I nailed it first time. I went stone, granite, diorite, andesite. And then for these ones, I've just messed it up completely. No idea why. Uh, for the andesite texture, as you can see here, it's very, very similar process. Uh, the andesite texture has been simply put onto here, darkened bottom corner, lightened top corner, and then we just have less noise in the middle bit there. And it just still looks a lot more like andesite, um, but very clean and very polished. And I think it looks really, really good. You can see right. See right up the thumbnail for the video here, can't you? There you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, finally to round it off, we just have the ores. Uh, I am planning on doing something a lot more interesting with the ores in the future. I'm actually considering having unique textures for all seven, which would be really cool. I've never done anything like that before, but I do want to give it a try. Um, probably what this is going to be like... Um, I like, I like emerald and lapis already. I, I think the emerald and lapis textures are really interesting and really unique. Uh, I especially like the fact that emerald has these, like, individual emerald-looking pieces. I'm going to try and do something similar to what emerald does for diamond, but obviously, like, different shapes and in different positions as well. Uh, and then, obviously, for things like these ores over here. I'm, I might keep iron and gold the same, just because the two blocks do behave very similarly, and I might make those two the default vanilla ones, but then have a different texture for redstone and also coal. Uh, but for now, as you can see, just the backgrounds of these blocks have just been changed to the new stone texture texture which we have over here um, just for the sake of consistency in case anyone wants to use the pack now. Uh, if you do want to use Calesti, I've actually uploaded version 0.3, the beta release, onto my Discord group as I now feel like there are enough features for you to justify actually trying the pack and playing it for yourself. Uh, obviously if you do find any issues or any complaints and you have any feedback for me then please feel free to... I just found one. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just talking about problems and I literally just found one. Look at the, look at the bottom seam of the effect icon. It's gone. It's gone. There's no black there. There should be there should be a tiny black line at the bottom of each of those. So there you go. I'll add that in point four, I guess, but there you go. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this small little update for Calesti, and hopefully you can get an idea from this video of the kind of direction that I want to take the pack in, making blocks more clean, more pretty, more easy to build with, uh, and just making everything look a little bit more me in the process as well. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you for more Calesti and more Blood Moon stuff and more SGT and more SBS and more Optipack and loads of things very soon. Okay, bye.